What's going on guys? Uh, my name is Carlos and uh, I just want to make a video uh, to talk about my experience with my catheter ablation for SVTs and WPWs. Um, I actually had my surgery performed on December 2016. Um, I know before I decided to get the surgery and go through with it, um, I watched a lot of YouTube videos and a lot of experiences from people to see what they had gone through before they decided to get the surgery. You know, that was very comforting because uh, you saw other people going through the same thing you were going through. Um, I know the day that I got told and I found out that the doctor recommended me to have that type of surgery. Um, it was a very tough decision. I, I was very scared. Uh, I actually went to my car and I started crying. Um, so if you're going through anything like this, um, you know, hopefully this helps you out. This video helps you out. Um and it helps you make that decision that whether to go with the surgery or not. So my symptoms started in the, the month of June of 2016. Um, one night I came home from work and I ate McDonald's actually, which is a terrible idea. But you know, that's the only thing that's open around like 11 uh, o'clock at night. So after I ate McDonald's, um, I was about to turn the lights off and go to sleep. And my heart just started raising. I started get, I got this shock. Um, my my heart was just elevating and I got this like fainting feeling which was it was it was really bad because uh, I've never fainted in my life before so uh, I went to my mom's room I knocked on her door and I told her what, what was going on um and I was just shivering I, I got very cold for some reason you know at that point I didn't understand why and uh, I went to sleep like that um the reason I didn't go to the hospital that day was because my heart was actually raising fast but it was it was normal, you know. It wasn't any abnormal. It wasn't hurt. My chest wasn't hurting, uh, so everything was normal. And I went to sleep that day. But I woke up the next morning with like the the biggest headache. Um, so I made an appointment to to go see the my uh, general doctor, and uh, he recommended me to go see a cardiologist. I made an appointment for that, and the cardiologist uh, gave me a monitor for around two to three days, which is over the weekend. To see if uh, you will catch anything on your heart. Uh, I did that. I turned that back in. Uh, and it turned out that my monitor didn't catch anything at that time. So he told me, you know, I was fine. Uh, not to worry about it. Um, but a couple weeks later, uh, I started having regurgitation problems. And uh, reflux problems, which were really bad. Um, it got, it, it's really annoying because my food will come back up to my esophagus every time I would eat. Which would start, it gave me a lot of chest pains and it didn't help my symptoms with my heart, right? So I uh, went to go see a gastrologist and uh, he recommended me to have an uh, endoscopy done. Uh, and uh, endoscopy is basically um, they put you to sleep and they put a, a tube down your throat with a camera. Uh, this little uh, camera goes down to your esophagus and to your stomach to see if you have any ulcers, any hernias, any bacteria. Um, anything that I can find that could be causing, you know, my, my regurgitation problems and that, all that reflux. So I had that performed and it turned out that I did have a, uh, hiatal hernia, which was two centimeters, uh, uh, two centimeters wide. And, um, I'm actually going to make another video about that later on because these two experiences, uh, coincide with each other. Right. So after that happened, um, I, I kept having chest pains. I woke up with a lot of chest pains and, and every time I would exercise or walk up the stairs, my heart would elevate. Um, anything I did uh, was causing my heart to just race. And even after I ate uh, fattening foods like greasy foods or fast foods, my heart would just elevate. So I made it. Uh, I went to the hospital one morning because my symptoms got really bad. And they performed a CT scan. They did a CT scan on me uh, from my upper body. Um, after the results, results came in, uh, they didn't find anything on the CT scan, which I was very relieved, relieved. Uh, and I was very happy for it because, um, you know, I didn't have anything, but at the same time I was kind of iffy because I knew that I had problems going on. And if the CT scan didn't find it, then, you know, what the hell is going on with me? Um, turns out my lungs, my heart, my esophagus were just fine. And, um, you know, that doctor that did the, performed the CT scan on me that day told me to, to go see the, the cardiologist again. And this time, the cardiologist actually gave me the, mon the heart monitor uh, for about a month. So actually a month, 
um, which was it sucked because the heart monitors are very annoying. You gotta carry them with you everywhere you go. Um, the only time you can take them off is when you shower. So, uh, but you still have to switch up the patches every like three days. Um, and then you gotta plug in, you know, the the wires back all the time. So that was very annoying. Um, I turned that back in a couple weeks later. They came back with the results, and it turns out that my heart was just fine. They didn't catch anything. But within that month, I at least try to, you know, uh, do a lot of physical activities. You know, lift a little bit of weights. Um, not too much because I, I was I'm, I was skeptical and scared. Uh, I ran a little bit, uh, threw the football around here and there. And, uh, you know, I uh, also uh, had sex to see if they could catch anything while I was performing. <laughs> and, you know, anything, it sounds blunt, but, um, you know, that's just my experience to see if, you know, they could catch anything. And they didn't. So, uh, they told me to go into farther, uh, detail. They told me to actually get a, uh, stress test done to make sure that, you know, your heart was fine while you were actually, uh, running or exercising. Um, and I did that and that's the day that, uh, supposedly, uh, they caught something on my heart rate because usually during the stress test you run or you walk at a faster pace depending on your health, depending on your situation. Um, and I ran for about, you know, seven to 10 minutes. And afterwards, that's when uh, the cardiologist saw that, that I actually had a, uh, I guess like a sketchy EKG, you know, it was abnormal. So that's when he recommended me to go see a uh, electrophysiologist, which is basically a professional and a uh, professional that reads uh, EKGs, right? Um, he told me to have that. But at least I felt kind of, kind of, kind of relieved because they had actually maybe found something. Um, and you know, I, I was hoping to cure it, uh, but it was the heart. So at the same time, I was kind of, I was, you know, I, I had mixed emotions, right? It was bittersweet. So uh, I went to see the electrophysiologist um, about three weeks later, and. Uh, she told me right away because she had read my profile. She had read the symptom, symptoms that I had gone through for like at least three to four months. Uh, once she read all of those, she came back and uh, she told me that she would recommend me having a catheter ablation surgery, which is a heart surgery. And as soon as she told me that, like, I was in shock. My mind was just blown. Uh, I was really scared. I didn't know what to think. And uh, she kept talking to me and talking to me. And I'm over here like, blank right uh i was like i don't even know what the hell she was saying because i was really scared i, I was in shock i didn't a i didn't even ask her any questions i was like okay all right right which was uh it, it was just very scary until the end i asked her again i was like are you sure like you know help me like what is that and the first thing i thought was you know they're gonna open my heart they're gonna go in my heart they're gonna do something to it but then she explained she was like no you know we go through veins you know the catheter goes through veins and you know we do this and that and uh, I was just really scared. I went back to my car. I was, I was really nervous. I was crying actually. I called my mom, and you know she started crying, uh, which is a very tough moment because uh, at the time I was 23, and at such a young age, I needed to have a a heart surgery. So through, if mostly, if some of you guys are going through that, I understand what you're going through. Um, and the reason I decided to actually go through the surgery is because besides the SVTs that she thought I had or that she saw on the AKG, I also had something called WPWs, which is uh, Wolf-Parkinson-White Syndrome, which is basically the syndrome that causes your heart to just stop, uh, basically just stop beating um, randomly, uh, whether you're exercising, you know, you're walking, you're doing anything. It causes your heart to stop. So I don't know if you heard of like athletes uh, heart stopping while they're, you know, playing sports is because most of them have, have some sort of heart condition. And most of the time is the Wolf, uh, the Wolf Parkinson White Syndrome. So I said, you know what, I'm young. Um, and if I kept if I leave this alone and it keeps developing, it could get worse in the future. And, uh, you know, I didn't want that. Um, and it was a very tough decision. I prayed a lot. Uh, and I came up with, uh, I know that I've seen the rates of, of how successful the, the surgery was and, you know, it was a high percentage. So I said, you know, I put, put all my faith in God and, and, you know, whatever happens, happens. Um, 
you know, I had a clean, a clean peace of mind before I went into the surgery. Um, so I did. So I had my surgery in August, uh, December 29th, uh, two days before uh, New Year's. So I had to stay in bed on New Year's. Um, yay me. <laughs> um, but I went through it. And this is the thing that I have a question on. And to see if anybody could relate with me. I actually came out of surgery two hours two hours uh, after I went into surgery. So it only lasted two hours. My surgery only lasted two hours. And usually I know a catheter ablation, what I read and what I've heard from people, lasts from about four to five hours. So I came out this a surgery and the doctor told my sister that they didn't find anything, that she went into my heart. Uh, they, she tried to make uh, my heart rate really fast to see if that electrical path, pathway uh, would come out and so she could fix it. And thank God I came out and I didn't have anything. She couldn't find anything and she actually spent some time, you know, trying to make that come out. And, you know, in conclusion, she came with a conclusion that she said, you know, you don't have anything, you know. So I came out two hours later. And at that time, I was just very relieved. Uh, I was really happy. Um, you know, I had to thank God, whether you're a believer or not. But I had to thank God that, you know, my heart was fine. Um, like all this time, I was very calm, even before I went into surgery. Because for some reason within, I kind of felt like, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't know. But hopefully I'll, I'll, I can get this fixed. And I actually came out of the surgery singing to uh, Justin Bieber, which I'll show you a video of. You want to listen to music? Justin Bieber is in town. <laughs> Do you feel okay? I feel like Justin Bieber. <laughs> um, yeah, it was, it was, it was, uh, it was, it was pretty funny. Uh, my sister took that video, so uh, kind of embarrassing a little bit. Um, but it's been, you know, guys, seven months uh, after the surgery. Um, you know, I haven't had any, uh, heart problems. I actually had, had a, I actually had a surgery for my hiatal hernia, um, three weeks ago. So I will update, uh, you guys on that and, um, let you guys know how that's, how, how that's going because basically that's where all my problems were coming from. Um, and as it goes for my heart, uh, I've been fine. Um, I was, I was still struggling, uh, with exercising, uh, and my heart rate, because of the hernia and the food regurgitation problem that I've been having, um, but I've been I've been fine, guys. So I want to know if you guys went through any of this. Uh, what do you guys think? Well, like, what do you guys make of you know the fact that I went into surgery and I you know they couldn't find anything? Um, I want to know if you guys any of you guys have gone through that um, because most of the people that I've seen they actually have SVTs. Uh, they actually have you know. WPWs and and they actually like end up having something done to their heart, uh, whether it's a catheter ablation or even farther. But with me, I went into surgery. They went in and they just came back out, not having anything. So I haven't I haven't heard from anyone uh, that hasn't had any anything going just like me. So if you guys could help me with that or or, or what are you guys' advice, I would really appreciate it. And if you guys want any more information, uh, you know I have a Facebook. You know social media is big, so. Uh, email, uh, uh, Instagram, Twitter. I'm here to help you guys. Leave a comment, and I would definitely comment. Um, you know, I want to help people because uh, there's a lot of people that help me, whether it was through YouTube, you know, or just online. Uh, it was very helpful. So if you drop a comment, uh, I would definitely respond right back. Um, you know, I'm very young and and I know how to use all this social media stuff. So you guys, let me know. Um, and thank you guys for watching. I hope this video helped. Um, and, um, best of luck.